Now, the number one mistake that new speculators make to trading futures is the misuse of leverage. This cannot be emphasized enough, the misuse of leverage. Many stock investors come from a world where when you put in $10,000, you're actually buying something. And so you put up $10,000 to receive $10,000 worth of equity. In futures, it's not that way. When you put up $10,000, you may be actually controlling $100,000 or $150,000 in true value in the underlying contract. So when you put up $10,000 or $15,000, you have to realize all of your profits and all of your losses are coming off of the total amount of the contract of $150,000. It's not happening on the $10,000 like it would in stocks. And so it's a definite change in your thinking that leverage actually in this scenario is credit, the bottom line. Leverage is a form of credit. And by putting too much money on one trade, you can hurt yourself. And these are the typical problems that a misuse of leverage occurs. People don't understand the true value of the futures contract they're trading, number one. Number two, they put too much money on one trade. And number three, they trade too many un unrelated markets. And we'll break down each item and show how this can go wrong. The first example is a gold contract. Right now, gold is in the news everywhere because of the weakness of the currency market. Let's look at the value of gold. Gold cash value now is US $375.50 per ounce, which is a lot for a small amount, but it's $375.50 per ounce. One futures contract represents 100 ounces of gold. So the contract value is $37,550 for one contract of gold. But the margin amount that you may put up is only $2,000.25 to control $37,550 or to have a, a contract of that value. So the money that you make is going to be based on the total $37,000. Either and the money that you lose will be based on the total $37,000. So when you look at it, the amount of margin that you put up to control this contract is five. 0.39%. So just look at that. You can easily see how someone new to futures can get themselves in trouble with the leverage. When you're only putting up 5% of the total value, it's easy to lose perspective. And this is why futures and trading is very risky. Most people don't understand how leverage operates. Second, we look at too much money on one trade. Many investors who come to futures trading have an all or nothing approach. And so they bring uh, 10,000 to their futures trading account and they trade it as if they were trading a stock account and they put $10,000 in. Well, that's not the way to trade futures. When you trade futures, you have to look at futures uh, as credit. And as such, you always leave some in reserve just in case the investment doesn't work out. One of the rules that works for us at our company and how I've traded for the last the past 11 years is a three times margin rule. For each contract that you acquire, have at least three times that amount in, amount in equity in your account. This is very important. So like our last example of gold where the contract was $2,025, you would not only trade one contract for every $6,000 you had in your account so that when price changes, uh, you're protected. And even with $6,000 in your account, you're looking at 15% uh, being the total value of a $37,000 contract. So it's still a very small amount, but it gives you leeway to allow trades to develop. Also, with the three times margin rule, this keeps you in the trade. Uh, you're able to eliminate your fear of whether or not uh, you're going to lose everything on this one trade. You're able to uh, make sure that you don't have to have greed with these particular trades because you eliminate the concept that this trade has to be a home run or you'll never trade again. You're able to put the money up, trade it, 
and step back and look objectively. I don't have $10,000 writing on this trade or even $6,000 writing on this trade. It's $2,000. So I'll let myself give myself a little leeway, and if the trade doesn't work out, I'll get out. So it automatically puts you into a speculator's mentality. You're looking to make profits on price changes. That's all we're trying to do. We're not trying to own the S&P 500 index. We're not trying to own the Dow Jones. So we have to use a rule like this to protect ourselves from getting caught up in the emotional excitement that futures allows. Next, we look at trading too many markets. And many, oftentimes people trade too many unrelated markets. Because there's leverage, uh, you can trade gold for $2,025. You can trade corn for maybe $500. Uh, you can trade coffee for $1,600. And you can easily find yourself with a $10,000 account looking at multiple opportunities and trying to, quote unquote, diversify yourself. But once again, this leverage is a type of credit. And as the market moves against you, you start to lose equity in your account. And so you put your other contracts in jeopardy, uh, whether they're making profits or not. So if you're profiting in one contract and the other one's losing money, uh, and they may be profiting and losing money at different rates, you're actually doing yourself a disservice. So I always recommend that when people begin to trade, they start off with one contract and focus on one market. Very simple thing to do because, because of the leverage, uh, profits, small fluctuations in price allow for large amounts of profits. So you don't need to be in every single market in every single opportunity. Now we look at the third problem, or the second problem with future investing, which is confusing speculation with gambling. When I began futures trading, uh, I used to have a very different view than I have now. You know, that's what happens after 11 years. And when I got started, uh, I was taught that futures uh, is a gambler's market and it's impossible to succeed at futures and there's no way to make money at futures because 90% of the people do lose money trading futures. But what's even worse is 90% of the people not only lose money trading one individual contract, they actually blow out their entire account. And over the years, I actually discovered why people were losing money in their account. And it goes with the whole Vegas mentality, that the money didn't matter since it's risk capital, and so I'll go out on a limb and risk at every opportunity. A lack of calculated risk. And without calculated risk, there is no speculation. One definition of speculation is the use of money to assume risk for short-term profit. In the knowledge that substantial or total losses are only one possible outcome. So even though you know that you can lose in this trade, it's only one possible outcome. Whereas with gambling, there is guaranteed only one outcome, which is losing. On the rarity, somebody may make money, but 90% of the people give money back to the casinos. And that's how a lot of people treat futures as a huge casino. It's unfortunate because there's an opportunity to trade futures uh, in a very calculative way and in a very intelligent way as a speculator because speculation and gambling are not synonymous. As investors, we have to focus on becoming effective speculators. Number three, improperly funding your account. Many investors come to futures not other understanding how much they should put in the account. And because of the origins of futures as being first an insurance organization, uh, and second, who the players are, hedgers who are actually business people taking delivery of these goods or uh, protecting themselves from price fluctuations in the S&P or the Dow Jones. Futures are operated more as a business enterprise and less as an investment tool. So since futures are considered more of a business enterprise, most people find themselves failing for the same reason that businesses fail. 